QuickBooks Online 2023 sub customers or jobs. Get ready to earn the skills needed to boost your bank books on up with QuickBooks Online 2023. Here we are in our QuickBooks Online test company file using the accountant view as opposed to the business view. You can toggle between the two views by going to the cog up top and switch the view down below. Duplicating some tabs to put reports in like we do every time. Right click in the tab up top to duplicate it. Right click in the duplicated tab to duplicate it again. Tapping to the middle so we can go to the reports on the left and open the balance sheet report. One of the two faves. Go into the tab to the right. Reports on the left. This time the other favorite report. The profit and loss otherwise known as the income statement. Closing the ham boogie. Scrolling up to the top, changing the range. We're going to look at 2025 this time because it's got some blank space for us to put data in. 010125 to 123125. Run it. Nothing's there. That's what we want because we're going to put stuff there shortly. Tab to the middle. Close the ham boogie. Scroll up to the top. 2025 again. 010125, 123125. And run it. Okay, let's tab to the left. Now we're going to focus just on the sub uh, customers which used to be called the jobs in the desktop view and focus just in on it remembering that the sub customers are closest related to the projects which kind of supplanted or took over support accounting instruction by clicking the link below giving you a free month membership to all of the content on our website broken out by category further broken out by course each course then organized in a logical reasonable fashion making it much more easy to find what you need than can be done on a youtube page we also include added resources such as excel practice problems pdf files and more like quickbooks backup files when applicable so once again click the link below for a free month membership to our website and all the content on it some of the things that you would prior have used sub customers for doing but sub customers haven't gone away and you could use these two things in conjunction with each other or sometimes uh, you might not have access to projects because you might have an earlier version or something like that and you might be using sub customers or you might have an older accounting system that basically possibly from quickbooks desktop that was transferred over or whatever or you were using it before they had the projects and you're still and so you'd be using sub customers possibly in that instance as well all right so if we go into the sub customers we're going to go down to the or up to the sales tab and we're going to go to the customers on the right hand side so the whole idea of the sub customer is that we're going to have our customers which if we're in a job cost type of system are the people that we're basically going to be billing for and then we'll have the uh, sub customers which will be the actual jobs that we are doing so we could have multiple jobs for one customer and then we can track in our financial statements the breakout of the activity by customer and uh, sub customer and track possibly like open and close jobs so we won't get into a, too much depth on the on a job cost system now uh, in terms of the details of it but just to get a general idea we set up a sub customer last time Let's set up a couple more sub customers just so we can get a good feel for what the reports look like with the sub customers. So we've got, uh, let's add another one. I'm going to say another sub customer. And I'm just going to number the sub customers as if they're going to be uh, job numbers. But of course, you could put a lot more detail in the sub customers as well. I'm going to put, put 410 for this one. And then I'm just going to say it's a sub customer. I'm going to say it's a sub customer once again of customer number one. And I'm going to make it a uh, bill to the parent customer. So that's going to be the general concept usually. So now we've got our two sub customers here. I'm going to go back to the primary window. And so now you can see the two sub customers, which I'm basically just calling jobs here. Now we could also set up a new customer. And let's say this was. Uh, 415 if we set up a whole new billing item here we can make this for customer number one again and then again if we wanted to build the sub customer we can uncheck that and say build the sub customer this is going to be checked on by default so let's add that one 
And so now we've got these three sub customers, or you might call them jobs, as they would be called in the desktop version that are connected to our customer number one. Let's make a couple for number two customer. So I'll say, add another one. Let's make this just a different number and structure just so I can differentiate them. I'm gonna make it a sub customer for customer number two. Okay. And then let's add another one. Add another one. Hold on back to my customer list. New again. Let's make this 512. And this is gonna be once again for a sub customer for customer number two. Okay, so then the general process would be that we're going to be having expenses and whatnot that will come up that we're going to be applying to a long term kind of job. And we want to basically be able to break out primarily the income statement, but possibly some balance sheet accounts as well by customer and be able to run uh, those reports. So the general concept would be we'll make invoice type of forms and we'll make them billable. So we, to we turned on the billable option before. So if you hit the cog button over here and we go to the account and settings, then expenses on the left hand side and in the bills and expenses, we said we want to track the billable expenses and items. Now you can also add a markup as you do that. So you're going to have an expense. It's going to pull over to the, to the uh, invoice and then we'll mark it up 30% per line item. So let's just play with that while we're doing this. So I'm going to say, let's say done and boom. And then as expenses come up, uh, we're just going to say, let's add an expense. I can hit the plus button over here without that opening. Now let's open it up over here. Expense form. And we're going to say that we had vendor number one. I'm just always going to use the same vendor just so it's easy. And this is going to be as of 010125 and I have my location, you know, in Nevada, what, what I'm, we're not really focused on the locations right now, the tags and whatnot, we're focused on just the sub customer. So I'm going to say supplies again. And, and traditionally what we would be purchasing is like cost of goods sold, uh, type of stuff if it was a long-term job. So let's just set up another account and call it, call it, uh, a, a cost of goods sold type of account cost of goods sold and we've got cost of goods sold labor versus rental let's say materials cost of goods sold save it boom and then i'm gonna say it's 2000 okay i'll keep it at 2000 it's gonna be billable and then we're gonna assign it to the customer so it's gonna go to customer let's say 400 again and so what's this going to do decrease the checking account the other side is going to go to the what we assigned here which i believe was cost to get sold on the on the income statement and then we're going to have it billable so it'll pull into the invoice and mark it up by that 30 percent is the general idea now note that as we do the markup because i just assigned it to an account which is the cost of goods sold account it's 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 gonna pull into the income statement using the the income account that's just kind of generated by quickbooks so we, we could do a little bit more advanced method using items that we might practice later but let's go ahead and save and close it and then we're going to go to the tab to the right and let's run it so if i look at a standard balance sheet now we got the checking account went down because that's what we would expect to happen now i could run the balance sheet breaking it out by customers <clears throat> and i've got a lot of different customers here so it becomes a long report that's one of the problems uh with this method and notice it's in here as not specified some of the balance sheet accounts again don't exactly break out perfectly by customer if i go back into this and check it out we've got our uh expense report here and the customer is assigned so i'm going to close this out so balance sheet reports don't always work perfectly. The income statement reports is really where the focus generally is because that's the performance report. So if I refresh this, this is the income statement before we break it out. It's in the cost of goods sold. If I go up top and I wanna see this by customer. So now we could run this 
not there, by customer. Customer, customer, there it is, boom. Okay, so there we have it. Now it's broken out by customer. Now let's pull that in to the, uh, the income line item and we'll see the income related to that customer as well. And notice it has the customer, and this is the sub customer and then the total for the customers adding up all the totals, which we'll see more when we add data. So I'm gonna go back to the tab to the left and let's say that we're going to, let's hit the plus button up top and say we're gonna make an invoice now and we will make it for uh, customer number 400 and that's the sub customer. I can pull in the billable item now. Let's do it, let's pull it in, let's do it. And then now we've got, let's keep it on the same date. We'll keep the same date here. And so now it's pulling in. Now, if I don't add any anything else other than what it's put in here, I could put a description in for what it was put in. So like materials that pulled in then it's just gonna it's just gonna pull into an account that's kind of made up by quickbooks because i'm not using a an item which is the thing that usually drives which account it's going to be going to uh so let's go ahead and just record it and see what it does see what happens so this is going to then increase the accounts receivable if i go to the balance sheet the balance sheet accounts receivable is breaking out by customer and then if I go to the tab to the right and run this one, now we've got the 2000 billable and the supplies. It didn't mark it up by that 30%. So for some reason that the, the thing didn't take to mark up by the 30%, let's do it again. And on the next one, we'll mark it up by 30%. I just turned it on again, but here we've got the income that pulled in. Notice that it pulled into the billable uh, expense income and then which is an income account that it kind of made up for the billable expense. We couldn't really switch it because we use that billable thing instead of using, instead of using the, the items. So let's do it again. This time, let's try to use an item with it and let's apply something to 410 this time. So I'm going to say uh, new, not new. What am I doing? Plus button up top and let's make another expense form. And this one, we're going to make it for 410. And let's make this one as of one five, let's say. And we're gonna say then down here, instead of using the category, let's use the item. So I'm gonna use an item now. And this is a standard technique for using items. If you're gonna try to pull the expense in a job cost type of system over to the invoice so that we have more control on which account's gonna be hit on the income side when we get to the invoice. So let's hit the drop down. And I'm going to say new item. And this time let's make it a, a non inventory because I'm not going to be tracking the inventory with, with it. Let's call it materials. And so I'm going to say copy that. It's going to be materials down here. I'm not going to add a class or anything. I'll keep it in the services, even though it probably should be going into the product. We'll put it to product. That's where I should have put the last one. And then I'm going to have both of these checked off. So that when it, if when I pull it onto the income statement, it's going to pull in to the income account of sales of product. That's the thing that's a little bit different here. And then down here, when we purchase it, I'm not going to put it into purchases. I'm going to put it into cost of supplies and labor, cost of goods sold. We're just going to expense it as we go. All right, so we're going to save it. And then let's put this in there for, let's say, uh, 500 this time and then I'll make it billable and it should mark it up so notice now it's marking it up like we wanted it to do last time but I didn't really check it too too much it's still I'm um, so anyways this six <laughs> that's what's gonna pull into the invoice when we pull it into the invoice obviously we could have multiple line items on on one of these items too so if I say add another one let's say it's gonna be a non inventory sir uh, labor labor and description description same concept the income account i'm going to put it to the sale of products when i pull it over to the invoice and then down here i can put this to cost of goods sold labor and we'll save it and let's say this one was 400 we'll make it billable as well marking it up 30 percent when we pull it on over into 
the uh, the invoice. And by the way, this shouldn't be going to customer up top. This should be going to a vendor. <laughs> and that's going to delete the whole thing. I'm going to save it. It should be going to a vendor. And then down here, it's still good. I'm going to say, okay, so I've recreated it. Materials and labor. And then I'm going to make it go to the project, which I think we're looking at 410 now is the one we want it to be going to. So that's going to be pulling over when I make the invoice. Okay, what's this going to do? Decrease cash. Other side goes to the expense account driven by the items this time to the cost of goods sold ones. And it'll be billable. So when I make an invoice for customer project or, or sub customer for 10, it'll pull over. So let's say save and close tab to the right and run it running. And so, so then uh, it's in not specified over here again. If I go to the tab to the right and run this one, now we've got the expenses that are pulling in to these same accounts. It looks dissimilar to what we did over here, even though we did items with this one. The items will differ when I pull it now into the, to the income account, because instead of just making this billable expense income, QuickBooks will now put it into the income account that we prescribed by the item. So if I go back to the first tab and just do that, plus button, invoice, and then we're going to say this time we want to do uh, 410. And we'll pull in both of these items. We can just add all of them. And so that looks good. That looks good. So now it's got the materials and it's got the markup that it pulled in and it's also got the product or the item. So the item is what's going to drive it to the income account that we wanted it to be going to. Uh, so then, so that looks good. So it's going to increase accounts receivable. The other side is going to be going to the uh, income account to the accounts that we prescribed it to be going to, and it'll be broken out by customer job or sub customer. So let's save it and close it tab to the right and run it. Now this one, uh, I think breaks out the accounts receivable. So now the accounts receivable are breaking out, whereas the cash wasn't. And I believe that's because when you look at the form for the invoice, we're assigning it to a customer on the invoice, whereas the, the checking account, because we're not assigning the, the customer to the full transaction, uh, isn't, we're assigning it per line item. So it's not hitting the cash side of the transaction. I think that's the differentiation. So when we use like classes for the entire and or location tracking for the entire transaction, then the balance sheet might work out a little bit better in those cases. We'll experiment with that later when we get to classes. But if I tap to the right, now we've got the income, the markup and the sales pulling over for this customer uh, or sub customer and it pulled to the account that we wanted it to QuickBooks still made up kind of another account for the markup. So if you do the markup that way, QuickBooks kind of makes up another account, but you get, you get a little bit more control on where it's going to go as opposed to that billing one where it's just going to make up kind of an account, which isn't, I don't think that's ideal because you kind of like to have the control, but in any case, here's the customer. We've got the two jobs for that customer. And then here's the total for a uh, customer number one. So now let's do one for the second customer, just so we can see customer number two and see how this kind of expands our reports or our reports are going to get, you know, kind of unwieldy. If we have a lot of customers going to be a lot of line items, a lot of columns. So if I go again and say, okay, let's do this again and say we have an expense again. And let's say this one's for sub customer 501 on like the eighth, let's say, and I'm going to use my item technique down here. And we're going to say materials this time. Uh, let's say, let's say 6,000. We're going to make it billable and customer, customer five. Oh, I did it again. Hold on. This isn't a customer up top. This is the vendor that we're doing. Do you want to pre-fill? No. Okay. We're paying the vendor. Now, the fact that we're paying a vendor is why I believe the balance sheet accounts don't, the, the cash account isn't going to be breaking out by customer because this vendor isn't 
indicating which customer we deal with as opposed to the invoice where the invoice has the customer up top. So, but when I assign it line item by line item, I'm assigning the customer per line item. So I can't assign the customer to the checking account because there's no line item for the checking account because the checking account is just the other side of the transaction driven by the expense form. It's bottom line here. There's nothing to assign this to the, to the, to the, to the cu customer field. Okay. So let's do it again. Spit it out. I can't really talk yet. I'm still warming up here. Let's do the next one is, is 1,500. And then we'll say this one also goes to customer. 2501. Okay, this is going to decrease the checking account. The other side is going to go to uh, the cost of goods sold driven by the items. Save it and close it. Tab into the right in it and then run in it. And so, so it <clears throat> decreased the checking account. And so let's do that. And then let's go then to, I believe it decreased the checking account, right? If I go into it. Let's just double check that if I could. Dr drilling down. So there it is. I don't think I refreshed it. And then let's go back. Back on over. So that looks more correct. It's been refreshed now. All right. And then if I tap to the right and we run this report, now we've got customer number two and the sub customer. So now we got customer number one activity and then the total for customer number one and then customer number two and the sub customer or job related to that total for sub customer number two and then the total line, which is our total income statement. The fact that we have this long report that actually kind of sums up horizontally to the total could be quite nice when we're trying to figure out problems with our job costing kind of system. The downside, of course, is that once you have a whole lot of customers, you, you're going to get a very expansive report that is going to have a lot of horizontal line items to it. And if you have a lot of customers that aren't job related customers, it, it might be difficult to kind of differentiate. Like if you're selling other stuff that's not job related in QuickBooks and you have all these other customers in there that you're not trying to track by job, then that's going to that could be quite bothersome as well with this type of report. However, note that even if you have like a hundred customers, your, your report's not going to be a hundred customers wide. If you weren't doing actual jobs on those hundred customers, because it's only going to be showing the activity being the income statement for this time range. So the income statement will just, you know, if there was no activity in this time range, even though you had customers that you did work on prior to that, then it's not going to be showing up in this type of report would be the general idea. So in other words, if I, if I ran this report for 010126 to 123126 and, and run it, then I still had some activity that I put in the two six, but this isn't the same activity. I don't see customer number two here at all, right? So let's go back on over to 010125 to 123125 and run it. And let's just do at least one, one more. I think I needed to add the income. Let's pull that on over to the income side, plus button, invoice it. And then on the invoice, we're going to say that this is going to be for 501 and pull it in. And so then it pulls in <clears throat> beautifully. And so now we're going to have accounts receivable going up and the other side going to the revenue accounts driven by the items that we have set up. Let's save it and close it. And then balance sheet account, balance sheet account. The accounts receivable is breaking out properly because the accounts receivable line item can tell what line item it was because we actually assigned the customer to it as opposed to that check the expense account. And then if I go to the tab to the right and we run this one, now we've got the income and the expenses. Let's just, just do one more in customer number two so we could see this subtotal again. So if I go back on over and we say plus another expense, we could say let's do the, the second one for customer number two. And let's say this happened on 12 or so. 
same kind of concept down here. We'll just say that we had labor for uh, 3,000 billable item. And then it's gonna be this one, 512 this time. And then we have materials. Materials for uh, for one four, let's say, billable. And it's gonna go for 512. Okay, so what's this gonna do? Decrease the checking account. And I assigned it to a customer again. It shouldn't be a customer. <laughs> it should be the vendor. No. Okay, now because I'm assigning it to a vendor, then notice it can't really break out this number, which is the checking account, the other side of the transaction by customer, because it, there's no line item assigning this one to a customer. These line items, which are the income statement side, are assigned to the customers. That's why it breaks out the income statement properly, I believe, and not the checking account. Save it and close it and then run it to the right, running. And so so you can see here, it didn't break out the cash account like it has been breaking out nicely the AR accounts. So if I go to the tab to the right, run it, then now we've got our another uh, sub account here on 512. So it can get kind of an extensive sheet here, but you can see it works, you know, it does its, it does its thing quite nicely in a in a job kind of system so i can break out my income statement by customer although it gets a little bit tedious a little bit redundant because you have this concept of the customer and then the sub customers and then the total so you so i mean you have basically two extra columns here i mean it, it, sometimes it'd be kind of nice to just run the report by just the jobs <laughs> to see the open jobs and not having this too redundant columns which can make your report really long if you were using class tracking then you can you can do it that way right you could sort it by by job and it, it's a little bit shorter of a report then you got customer two which has the sub customer sub customer and the total for uh, customer number two and then the total income statement so one of the primary things that is nice here is that you can run this report that has all of the uh, customers in it and it's got the total so that you can tie everything out to your actual financial statements as opposed to like tags or sometimes when you go into the project reports just the individual reports they just give you the income statement activity by that particular project or job great that's great to zoom in sometimes like that but it's nice to be able to see the the whole everything tied out so you can tie it out to your financials then you can filter this kind of report by going to the customize up top and you can use your filtering options and if you were using other kind of things as well like classes and location tracking then you can filter you can run the report by customer and filter by location and class tracking right that's one one way that you can do it if you don't have location and class tracking then you would most likely filter by customer so if i want to focus in on one customer or one job i can say let's just take a look at that let's take a look at that uh 415 customer only and run it and i didn't do anything for 415 <laughs> apparently let's run it again wrong pick don't pick that one let's do it for uh 410 410 run it and so there we have it. Now, again, it's a little bit tedious even when you do this because it's the sub customers tied to the job. So you're gonna have the customer and then the sub customer, the sub customers tied to the customer, I, I mean. So you got the customer, the sub customer, and then the total, and then the total over here. But that's not too bad to deal with, right? So now you can, you can zoom in to each individual job by filtering to each of those individual jobs so it's a it's a so it's a workable kind of system now now note that the primary thing that happened is after sub customers were in play is the projects so if you go over to the projects then like if you were using sub customers before in another accounting system or jobs before in quickbooks desktop or sub customers in quickbooks online and then they added the jobs then the question is, well, do you want to convert everything over 
to, I'm sorry, then they added the projects. The question is, do you want to convert everything over to projects? And I mean, if you have a system that's working, maybe it's not worth it, but they, they have some conversion, you know, concepts that you could you can look at to try to convert everything to projects but it's still kind of a kind of a, uh, a scary task to do but uh, the projects are different they work in a similar fashion so we'll talk more about projects later but you'll see that basically you have your own kind of area that's separate from the customer area that sorts the projects and you've got a little bit more of the sorting tools down here for uh, the projects as opposed to the jobs and then you could run the reports by project. So do the projects then make the jobs or sub cost customers obsolete? Not necessarily, because because again, you, you could imagine that you're using sub customers quite well and, you, and thank you very much. I'm going forward quite well with them. You might keep going with that. The projects also add some features like sometimes when you're trying to integrate payroll and stuff into the projects, but you might still use the jobs or you could say, hey, look, I would like to to have a use the projects, but let's say I want to tie them to a job. So now you're going to say, I'm going to make a project that ties to a customer. The projects ties to the customer in a similar way as the the sub customers or jobs tie to customers, even though it's not in the same window. But you might say, hey, look, I've got a customer and then I've got the the sub customer which has a different billing address to the other customer so i would like to say yes it's tied to customer number one but i want to make the project tied to the sub customer so you can see the tiering action you might have customer number one then the sub customer and then you might tie your project for some reasons to the sub customer so if i if i make a project for example i have to tie it to a customer instead of actually customer number one I could tie it to a sub customer, which might be useful for like billing type of purposes. So the, the obviously the sub customers haven't gone away. They haven't removed the sub customers. They are there in a system where you might need them if you're if you don't have access to to the projects, possibly. Even if you have access to the projects, if you're using the sub customers and you're content with the sub customers, because that's what you've been using, then the question is, do you want to try to convert all the sub customers to projects or are you good going forward with the sub customers? And then of course you could still use the sub customers in conjunction in some cases with the projects, even if the projects are kind of taking over some of the functionality that the sub customers would have done in the past. So we'll get into projects more in future presentations.